Lord, this morning we are here before you. And again, we're following the guidelines. Our services will be like an hour, an hour, 15 minutes, uh, because we are indoor and we don't want to stay indoor too long. And as time goes on, we will adjust. You know, one of the things the Apostle Paul was a wise man. He said, I learned to abound and I learned to abase. I learned to be hungry. I know how it is to be full. I can make the necessary adjustments. I can go with the flow. And so we thank God that we are here and we are here to just lift up the name of Jesus. He said in his word, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Those that are here right now this morning, those that are watching via Facebook, I pray that the Lord will touch you. I speak a word, I decree and declare a word over your life in the name of the Lord. In this season, in this situation that God will come through for you and God will come through for your family in the name of the Lord. Well, we want to get together and have a time of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. A time of praise, a time of worship. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And we believe when we lift him up, he will draw from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Hallelujah. We thank God for those that came in this morning. And I often tell the church, this is the second time back. And if for some reason you can't make it, don't feel guilty. We understand. You know, if you can't be present in the building, we trust that you tune in from your home, hit the share button, hit the thumbs up. Uh, we are supportive. We are a church. We are one. We are united. We are not divided. We are doing this together in the name of the Lord. So God bless you and be encouraged. Today we have Pastor Kojo. He will take us into a time of praise and worship uh, and let's give God the glory. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We bless your name today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your love is kind Your love is patient You fill my heart With so much peace and joy You're amazing You make my life feel brand you're amazing you make my life feel brand new jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh jesus you love me too much oh too much oh, excess love oh, your love is kind your love is patient you fill my heart with so much peace and joy you're amazing you make my life feel brand new you're amazing you make my life feel brand new jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh Too much, oh, excess love, oh. 
Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much excess love, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh. Much excess love, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much excess love, oh, Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Excess love, oh, your love is kind, your love is patient, you fill my heart with so much peace and joy. You're amazing You make my life feel brand new You're amazing You make my life feel brand new Jesus, you love me too much, oh Too much, oh too much, oh, excess love, oh, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Oh, yes. Too much, oh, too we love much, you, Jesus. Excess love, oh, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance. From my enemies Till all my fears are gone You unravel me With a melody You surround me with A song Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God yes I'm no longer I am a child of God From my mother's womb You have chosen me Love has called my name And I've been born again Into your family your blood flows through my veins From my mother, from my mother's womb You have chosen me 
love has called my name and I've been born again yes Lord into your family hallelujah your blood flows through oh, my face we bless your name Lord hallelujah and I'm no longer a slave oh, yes. to fear uh, we thank you Jesus Hallelujah. I am a child of God. Yes. Of God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. You split the sea so I can pour oh, yes. right. All my fears are drowned in perfect love. Oh, Lord Jesus, you rescued me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea. You split the sea so I can walk. All my fears are drowned in perfect love. Oh yeah, you rescued me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of God, and I'm no longer. Yes, I'm no longer. I am a child of God. No longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands and give God hallelujah. some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give God some praise in the house. Lift your hands and give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And when the praise is go up, guess what? The blessings will flow in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Kojo. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to fear because God did not give us the spirit of fear nor the spirit of intimidation. Hallelujah. Glory to God, but of power, of love, and of a strong mind. Hallelujah. We thank God. We give God the glory. We give God the honor. And we give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. We thank God today and we give God the glory. We want you to pray for us out there and we are, this is something new for us this morning in terms of streaming live from the church. Amen. And we, we just thank God that the gospel is going forth in the name of the Lord. You know, one of the things Jesus said is that this gospel must be preached into all the world and then shall the end come. Amen. And we are determining an international Christian center to preach God's word. Amen. The word must go forth regardless of the time or the season or the era or the pandemic. The word of God shall not return unto him void, but it must accomplish the purpose in which it is sent forth to do. And so we thank God for that today. Well, God bless you this morning. I want to continue where we left off on last uh, Sunday Amen. I was uh, talking about the law of uh, the law of distraction. Amen. While we have the law of attraction, amen, where uh, you attract uh, what you focus on, and what you focus on expands. What you meditate on manifests. And so uh, sometimes the enemy can be very cunning, crafty, and subtle. Amen. And would uh, uh, cause us to be distracted. 
Amen. And lose a sense of purpose and a sense of destiny. If a ship were to leave New York with no destination, it can run wild in the ocean, hit a rock, or come onto some deserted island. There must be a sense of focus. There must be a sense of uh, a destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. David said in Psalms 57 and 7, My heart, my heart is fixed on thee, O Lord. O Lord, my heart is fixed on thee. Psalms 57, amen, and 7. I like that. In other words, David was focused, hallelujah, on the things of God. And so I shared with you on last week, and I will not repeat myself. I told you that I would look at this from two angles. From Peter in a crisis, a crisis, how he was distracted, and then how Nehemiah in building, how the enemy tried to distract him so that he would lose focus. Amen. And the word focus is spelled F-O-C-U-S. Follow one's course until success. You cannot deviate. You cannot be sidetracked. Amen. You cannot lose focus. Amen. Amen. Be intentional. Amen. In what you set out to do. Amen. Be passionate about it. Find your niche. Amen. Have a desire. Desire, they say, is the starting point of all achievement. Amen. So stay the course. Sometimes people can distract you. Things can distract you. Amen. And so we need to stay, amen, focused. Hallelujah. Uh, let's look at Peter. I mean, uh, Matthew this morning. Matthew. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew uh, chapter 14. Amen. And uh, we read that scripture to you last week. I want to uh, kind of move on from that scripture somewhat, but I want to uh, wrap things up here. May, may I start from um, uh, just 27? Amen. Matthew 27. Amen. The scripture said immediately, immediate, you know the story of how in the middle of the lake, there a storm arose. And it says immediately Jesus spoke to them, have courage, do not be afraid. Amen. And he said, Lord, it is you. If, if, if it is you, Peter answered him, command me or bid me, amen, to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And guess what Peter did? He climbed out of the boat and so forth, and he went walking on the water, amen, towards Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 30. I want to zero in on this verse. But when he saw the strong, the strength of the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And guess what? He cried, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Amen. What I like about it is that you can, you can challenge God. Not in a rude or disrespectful way, but we see throughout the Bible, throughout the word of God, where, uh, um, where, where, who, who it was uh, that um, went to God and bagging with God? It was Gideon. It was Gideon. Gideon, the Lord called Gideon. How many of you that are looking, there's a calling of God upon your life and you are making excuses. The Lord called Gideon and guess how the Lord called him? He said, mighty man of valor. Don't see yourself as weak. Don't see yourself as defeated. See yourself as a winner, as a champion. For with God, we are the majority. With God, all things are possible. And so he said, Gideon, thou mighty man of Allah. And it seemed like Gideon had a problem. He didn't understand. You know, you got to see yourself. You got to see value in yourself to add value to yourself. And Gideon was used tremendously by God. And God says, Gideon, you're a mighty man of Allah. And hear what Gideon said in Judges chapter 6. He says, you know what? In Judges chapter 6, he said, I'm, I'm the least in my father's house and I'm from a poor family. And Gideon said unto God, if thou will save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. Judges 6 and 36. 37 says, behold, I will put a fleece of wool. In other words, Gideon saying, God, I want you to confirm. I want you to validate. I want you to assure me. Just like Peter was saying, Lord, if it is you, I want you to bid me come. If it is you, Lord, 
if it is you, I will come. If you call me out, I will come, Lord. I will come. And so, and so, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the flower. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dried upon all the earth beside, then I shall know that thou will save Israel by my hand as thou hast said. So he said, I'll put this bowl out there. I'll put this bowl out there. And so it was so, for he arose. And when he arose in 38, it says what? He arose up early in the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wringed the dew out of the fleece. And guess what? He got a full bowl of water because the wool was wet and around it was dry. And if like that was not enough proof, he said, Lord, I will do it the next day. And Gideon said to the Lord, let not thy anger, don't be angry with me, Lord. Uh, I want to, I want to, I want to be sure. I want to be certain it's you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I will speak. And this once, let me prove, I pray thee. But this once, with the fleece, let it now be dry only on the fleece. And upon all the ground, let there be dew. So one day the fleece was wet and around it was, was dry. Now around it was wet and the fleece was dry. And God said, God said, So that night for it was dry upon the fleece, only there was dew on all the ground. So we see here that Gideon challenged God and proved God, just like Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me come. And he came and he was doing fine. We see here, we see here that, um, we see here that, uh, hallelujah, that Gideon challenged God. Not only Gideon, Abraham, Abraham said, Abraham said, look, 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 if there is, if there is 50 righteous, would you save the, 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 the nation? If there is 50 righteous, would you save them? If there is 50 righteous, would you save them? And, and, and Abraham bagging with God. He bagging with God. Hallelujah. And so every time he says, if there is 40, if there is 30, if there is 20, if there is 10. Amen. You could say, God, uh, if you call me, Lord, you will equip me. But Lord, I want to be sure. The Bible said, prove all things. Hallelujah. And here Peter, amen, wanted to be sure it was God. And even though it was God, while he was walking, hallelujah, he began to sink. And God had to stretch forth his hands and save him. Hallelujah. Amen. And why Peter sink? Because he lose focus. Because he was distracted. And he began to go down. When you get distracted, it can cause bodily harm. It can cause injury. When you are distracted, you've got to stay focused in a crisis. Hallelujah. Now I want to move on to Nehemiah. It was a crisis, yes. But here Nehemiah was in a building mode. And guess what happened? We want to look at that story this week. I may not be able to finish it this week, but we're going to take a look at that this week. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, hallelujah. Chapter, glory to God, chapter 1. Now Nehemiah was a very unique book. Very unique, Nehemiah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, Nehemiah was the ki king, Kabira. And to be a Kabira, it was a position of great trust. Oh, yeah. As an advisor to the king, he had the responsibility of keeping the king from being poisoned. In other words, Nehemiah would taste the wine before the king would drink from it. While Nehemiah no doubt enjoyed the luxury of the palace, his heart was in Jerusalem, a little city on the far frontier of the empire. Nehemiah had a love for country. Nehemiah prayed and fast in qualities of leadership uh, 
powerful, eloquent, inspirational, organizational skills. Confidence in God's purpose and quick, decisive response to problems qualify him as a great leader and man of God. Most importantly, he showed us a self-sacrificing spirit who only interest is summed up in all repeated prayer. Remember me, O oh God, for good. Remember me. And so what happened when Jerusalem was conquered by Nebuchadnezzar around 606 BC? Some of the people remain in, in the exile, in, back in J Jerusalem in a time of exile. And now Nehemiah was in Persia, and Nehemiah, follow me, Nehemiah was functioning as the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah advised the king. He was like a, a, a national advisor, senior advisor, security advisor. Amen. And one of the things Nehemiah did, you know, I thank God, amen, that God is good and God is faithful. In chapter 2, let's look at chapter 2 and hear what it says here. Chapter 1, rather. Amen. Chapter 1. Let's look at verse 2. Hanani, one of the brothers, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them. Nehemiah was concerned. He asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto him, they said unto me, the remnant that are left, of the captivity hallelujah amen there in the province are in great conflict and reproach the walls of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire my God when Nehemiah heard that when he heard his words he said then I sat down and I wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed to the God of heaven. When Nehemiah heard what was happening in his country, guess what happened? Nehemiah began to fast. He began to pray. And Nehemiah, amen, began to mourn and wept before the Lord. When you hear something, when you hear bad news, it says the people are in disgrace. The walls are broken down. The gates are burned with fire. Jerusalem is in rubble. And when Nehemiah heard that, uh, he said, uh-uh, he began to cry, he began to mourn, he began to weep, uh, he began to fast uh, for Jerusalem. May I say this to us today? Can I speak to you? We live in these United States of America. And I tell you what, most of us uh, have ancestors. We were not, most of us were not born here. Some of us came from Ireland and Scotland and Germany and Italy and the, the, the islands uh, and, and Africa and Russia amen and Latin America let me tell you something we all came here and once you were born here amen you are a citizen of the United States and you must have a passion and a love for country Nehemiah loved Jerusalem when he heard the news he was crying and weeping and praying even though he was the cupbearer hallelujah and I want to say for all of us that are here you can't be living in this country and bad mouth this country and while America has done some wrong I rather take my chances here you don't badmouth your own house. You don't badmouth your own church. You don't badmouth your own ministry. You don't badmouth your own children. You don't badmouth your own countries. Yeah, we will have our differences, but we are Americans. You say, preacher, is this a political statement? No, I'm saying Nehemiah, when he heard about his country, let me tell you something. There is something called love for country. There is something called patriotism. You know, most of us that came here, when there is World Cup, we root for the country of our ancestors. Yeah, yeah, if it's showing in another country, we will set up late at night to catch it. If there's the Olympics, we root from the people. If you're Trinidadian, you're rooting for Trinidad. If you're Jamaican, you're rooting for Jamaican. If you're Italian, you're rooting for the Italian. Yeah, we have that within us. 
When Miss World is showing, you will sit up late at night. You want to see Miss Universe crown. You are root if you are Venezuelan. You are rooting for Miss Venezuela. If you are from Ireland, you are rooting for Miss Ireland. If you are from Puerto Rico, that's how it is. We have our biases because we support the country in which we come from. We feel proud. We feel a sense of heritage. Are you with me? Nehemiah felt the same way when he heard what happened to his country. Well, I am from Trinidad originally. We are all kingdom people, but I'm just saying. And I, I'm praying. This morning I got up and I was praying for Trinidad. The pandemic seems to be rising. Racial tension in the country. You know, you must have something for your country. Whether it's Italy, whether it's Russia, whether it's Yaming, whether it's Ira, Iran, whether, whatever. We have somewhere where our ancestors came from. So when Nehemiah heard what was happening, he began to cry and mourn because he had a love for country. Watch this. Stay with me. Nehemiah chapter 2. I want to read this to you. Hallelujah. During the month of Nisan. Ah, in the 20th year of Ataxerus, the king. That the wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sat in his presence. Nehemiah, the cupbearer, who would taste the wine before the king would drink it so that the king would not get poisoned. Nehemiah, who had a jovial spirit, came before the king and he was sad. Nehemiah, wear his emotion on his sleeve. When things are not right, how can you be, be, be joyful? How can you be when you see, amen, your country is going down in rubble? Wherefore the king said unto to me, why is my countenance sad? Seeing that thou art not sick, Nehemiah, you're not sick. How come you sad today? That's not your personality. That you are out of character, Nehemiah. That's not you. What's wrong, Nehemiah? Talk to me. Let's have a dialogue. Seeing that thou art not sick, there is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore and afraid. Nehemiah was afraid to approach the king. We all sometimes have that fear within us. And here what verse 3 says. Stay with me all. And said unto the king, let, me, let the king live forever. He give respect now. Why should my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchre lieth waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? My Lord. Then the king said unto him, For what doest thou make requests? So I prayed to the God of heaven. He prayed to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, Ah, and if thy servant found favor, somebody say favor. Amen. I pray this morning, favor upon your life, favor upon your finances, favor upon your children, favor upon your ministry, favor in the midst of a pandemic. I pray for favor. Hallelujah. If I found favor in your sight, that thou would have sent me unto Judah, so unto the cities of my father's sepulchre. That I may build it. Hallelujah. Do we have any builders in here? And once you decide to build, the enemy will come at you. Do you know it takes years to build the World Trade Center? Architect, plumbers, electrician, prince, uh, cranes, manpower, uh, sheet rocker, my God, slabs of concrete, air condition, duck work. To build the World Trade Center. And in half an hour, it was crushed to the ground in smoke and rubble. I was there the second night on September uh, 12, 2001 to clean up. Uh, and I saw the smoke. Uh, and I saw the twisted steel and the crushed concrete. Uh, it was a sight to behold. And that's what I'm talking about. I want to talk about Nehemiah building. And how the enemy came to distract him. If you are doing something good. If there is a tree that is bearing fruit. People will pelt at it. They will come to If there is nothing on it. As a matter of fact. When the fig tree had nothing. Jesus cursed it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Nehemiah. Now the king said unto me. The queen also sitting by him. They had a conference call. For how long shall your journey, your journey be? Nehemiah was a man of integrity. Nehemiah was a man of prayer. Nehemiah was a man of destiny. Nehemiah was a man of purpose. Amen. And when you add value, people don't want you to leave them. 
Oh, Laban didn't want Jacob to leave. He said, you are better to me than ten sons. From the moment you came into my life, my livestock increased. Here Nehemiah sat with the queen. And they were saying to, I mean, um, um, the king sat next to the queen and saying, how long are you going for? We're going to miss you. How long will that journey be? And when will you return? When are you coming back? Some people, you don't care for them to come back. I'm sorry to say that harsh. They are a problem. They will trouble you. They will nag you. They will frustrate you. They will drain you. They will exhaust you. Be a blessing. I always tell people, you are blessed to be a blessing. Bless them where you're planted. Don't just, if you look for faults, you will find them. Nehemiah was a good man. Nehemiah was a praying man. Nehemiah was a man of patriotism. And the king and the queen sat and said, how long are you going? And we want to know when you're coming back. Hallelujah. When are you going to return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Hallelujah. Let me say this. Let me say this. Listen up, everybody. You know, I thank God that I have been in this country for more than three decades. I am a citizen of these United States. In my lifetime, I have seen a lot. Are you with me? In the islands in which I grew up, I remember in 1969 when man landed on the moon. We walked for one hour to go to the neighbor and we saw the moon landing on a 19-inch square box TV, black and white. The place was full because that man was the only man in the village that had a TV. 1969. Hallelujah. I was blessed to come to this country in the 80s. Glory to God. I've seen technology. The internet. Wow. Can you imagine without the internet? I couldn't speak to you live in your home and in your country. I enjoy some of the prosperity of these United States. In 2001... On an early September morning, I saw the World Trade Center came crushing down. I've seen where America went to war in Iraq. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've seen the, the, the revolution of, the, of, the, of, 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 of technology and the cell phone. Glory to God. Are you with me? I've seen all these things. And now, can you believe... That we are in the middle of a pandemic. In my lifetime. The last great horrible pandemic was in 1918. Over 100 years ago. The world had 1.5 billion people that time. And one third of the world. 500 million people came and became infected. In America alone. 675,000 people died. Hallelujah. People died. And now in the 21st century, we are witnessing a pandemic. Countries all over the world, economies are struggling, borders are shut down, and it is said. That in a couple of weeks, the death toll could climb to 200,000 people in America. In the 21st century, I've lived to see the crack era where people were just drug out. And now, in the middle of this great nation, we are seeing a pandemic and racial tension. God, we don't know if people, this will be an unprecedented election come November. Would you be able to send in your ballot by mail? What's going on with our postal service? You say, Pastor, stick to the Bible. No, I'm talking about this country. May I say this today? And I want to pray for the world and I want to pray this morning for America. 
You must have a love for your country. Here is where you eat and sleep and live and worship and work. This country, is it a light on a shining hill? On a, sh uh, uh, on a hill? I pray this morning for the Senate. I pray for the Congress. I pray for every mayor, every governor, and even the president of this United States. What's happening to the country in God we trust? America, the land that I love? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. The king Kabira. He left comfort and convenience. He left luxury and splendor. He left prestige and position. And he said, you know what? My country is in trouble. The walls are broken down. The gates are burned. There's a disgrace. There's a reproach. The people have lost their dignity and a sense of patriotism. I am going to ask the king for some time out. I'm going back to my country. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to trust God. And I'm going back there. And we're going to build this thing. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Moses had a love for people too. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's court. He had opportunity. He was next in line. But who cares about personal ambition? You've got to put country over party. You've got to put country. What's wrong with America? America seemed like it's heading in the wrong direction. And Nehemiah prayed and he fasted. And I want to call on this nation. I want to call on Christians all over. It's time that we pray. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 said, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Oh yes, oh yes, and I will heal their land. You know, Proverbs 14 and 34 says, Righteousness shall exalt a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Hebrews 11 and 25 says, Moses chosen to rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He said, I can't watch my brothers die. Oh, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to bring deliverance uh, to my people. Is there anybody have a passion? Do you know, two weeks ago, my wife and I, we went on a vacation right in New York State. And we drove upstate to the Niagara Falls. And we went to Buffalo. And we went to the National, the, 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 the Naval Park. And I'm not, I don't have a military background. But I went to that ship, Brother Willie. It was built in the 1940s during World War II. Two destroyers side by side in a submarine. It was like a museum. And one of the veterans took me in, my wife and I. It was rich in history. And they said, this would happen. How these ships were built, how many crews were on, the kitchen where they prepared the meals, and my God, the, 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 the cannon that they had, amen, and my God, how old the computer system was, and how they had to, uh, they, not, they had, they, they was an, uh, it was a lot of heat uh, in, in, in the engine room, and the man would be wet, uh, and, 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 so, and, and, and then he says, uh, he told me about a ship that was destroyed, and how the man, uh, it was named after them because five brothers uh, died in the sea, my God, and guess what, they died in, when the, when, 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 the, when the ship was hit and in shark infested waters, my God, shark ate them. And I, I, my, my hair grew on my back. My, 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 my adrenaline flowed. I said, my God, I've never been in military, but I have respect for those that went out there and give their blood and give their life for democracy. And now our democracy is being challenged. Ah, Christians, we have to rise up like Nehemiah and have a passion for this country. I cannot stay here and drink coffee and wine while my country people die for their country. Hallelujah. Do you know I live in the state of New York for most of all my life since I came to this country? And there was a time, Neela, when New York was the epicenter of the epicenter. 
Today, right now, they said the flu season is about to come and God knows what is going to happen. This thing is serious. I'm not trying to scare you or alarm you. People are dying every day. And you say, okay, when it hit home, it's a different ball game. People die and nobody could have gone to their funeral. They didn't have a proper home going. Kids lost mother and father. They are orphans right now. The election seems to be in turmoil. What's wrong with America? Let us do like Nehemiah. Let's call a fast. Let's pray. Let's weep, church. Churches are closed. Some don't know if they're coming back. Small businesses are closed. They don't know if they are coming back. It seems like the Senate and the Congress cannot agree on a package for the people that are without work. Lord, help us. Help this great America. And Nehemiah give up everything. I want to challenge this church for the next 72 hours. ICC, Nehemiah was one man and he prayed, wept, and mourned for his country. Listen, let us call a three day fast. Amen. I call on ICC. I call on everyone under the song of my voice. You think it's a joke? Let's call a time of prayer for the nation. When the Lord called Jonah and said, Jonah, go to Nineveh and warn Nineveh. What? I, 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 I wonder. I'm not a prophet of doom. I believe in preaching grace and love and forgiveness. But I wonder if America have strayed from God. Our founding fathers, amen, they were people of prayer. I have more respect for now. Not that I didn't have respect for Veterans Day and Memorial Day and Independence Day. People come from all over the world to be in America. Some will brave the ocean, shark infested water on a raft to get here. And we cannot see this country fall apart without going to God like Nehemiah and say, God, send me. I want to do something. I want to pray. I will weep. I will fast. I will go. I will rebuild. We sit here with our biases, who's Republican and who's Democrat. At the end of the day, we are Americans. At the end of the day, we are God's children. And the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy, to divide us. And when the Lord called Jonah, he says, go down to Nineveh and tell him to repent. Have we normalized things in the Bible? Uh, let me be careful. I don't want nobody to shut me down. Amen. Today, today the church, certain things, they don't even preach about it. We, we divert from it. We, we, we go around it. We don't talk about Sodom and Gomorrah anymore. Don't, 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 don't you dare go there. It's the Bible. It's the scripture. Don't talk about it. Has we become numb and immune to sin? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. Is it a plague? Is it God saying to America, wake up? And instead of Jonah head to Nineveh, he went somewhere else. It's the calling of God upon your life and you're making excuses. America needs God. America needs prayer. And when Jonah went in a different direction and disobeyed God, he was thrown overboard. God caused the fish to swallow Jonah. And in the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed. Have we lost the art of prayer? Do we pray anymore? Protests have its place. Different organizations have its place. But when would America fall on their knees and say, God forgive us for our sins? And when Jonah prayed... The Lord caused the fish that swallowed Jonah. He prayed in the belly of a fish in the belly of the ocean and God heard him. Man always ought to pray and not to faint. Can we get back to prayer? We have to be careful we don't offend this group and don't offend that group and don't offend this group. What about offending God? Jonah came back. Jonah chapter 3. Let's look at that quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And I'm going to tell you more, amen, next week on Nehemiah. How Nehemiah was focused. He set his face like a flint. He came with an assignment in mind, and that is to build in Jesus' name. And when you begin to build something, I, I respect people who build something. You often hear me say, this church that I'm preaching from, we bought this bus garage, broken down, no plumbing. Barely had a roof on there. No electricity, no running water. My God, it was a shell. The day we was about to break ground, a young man passed the church and went into the other block, called me up and said, Pastor, I can't find the building. I said, you just passed it. When he came back and he looked, his jaw dropped. As to say, this building? But amen, we thank God for vision. Vision is the art of seeing the invisible. And we came together. Deacon Eiffel is a testimony. Amen. That's why he's a pillar in this church. That's why you have seen people come and go. He has a patriotism spirit. He's connected. Hallelujah. Sometimes there's something deep inside of you that people don't understand. You are connected to something. You must be connected to a ministry. You must be connected to a family. You must be connected to a nation. You can't be freelancing. You can't be a normal. You can't just be string. You can't just be a fraction here. Disenfranchised. You gotta belong to something. And I remember friends. And I said, and I say it again, amen, I say it again. For eight months, I came here after work when I was working the secular. And I'm not exaggerating. Every single day for eight months except Sunday, I did not miss one day. Some days we left here at two o'clock in the morning working. And we thank God for the house of the Lord. David had a passion for God's house. When, when Jonah... Jonah had a message from Nineveh. Repent. Turn to God. Go back to Bethel. Back to the place of God. Back to the house of God, America. Watch this. And he caused it to be pronounced and the published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, saying, let neither man nor beast nor herd taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. He was calling a corporate fast. He was calling a national fast. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Sackcloth was made from goat here. It was a thick skin that they would put on themselves in a time of fasting and mourning. Sackcloth and ash. Repentance on your face before God. God, we need you. God, come through for us as a people. Do you know to what it is to live in a country where there's a dictator? Do you know what it is to live in a country where there's anarchy and when there is uh, uh, people uh, uh, killing one another and ethnic cleansing? America has enjoyed freedom, but freedom is not free. Men and women give their life so you and I could enjoy democracy. Don't sleep on America. We have to pray. And cried, Almighty God, let them turn one from the evil ways and from the violent that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that, he, that we perish not? Watch this. And God saw their works that they turn from their evil ways and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Because a nation went down in prayer and fasting and returned to God, God had a change of heart, and God spared Nineveh. I pray today that God will spare America. Next week, I want to continue on how Nehemiah came together in a record-breaking time. Focus sold out and build the walls of Jerusalem and put the fish gate and the dung gate, amen, and all the gates, amen, back in place. Shall we stand in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. I want to pray. Would you pray with me, please? Would you pray for America? Would you help me pray? Pray for Lebanon. Pray for Syria. Pray for Venezuela. It seemed like the world is in trouble. The Bible said in the last days, perilous times shall come. Would you set yourself in agreement with me?
Those that are watching, would you set yourself in agreement with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I stand before you as your servant today. And Lord, we pray for America, that America will return to God. We pray this morning, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, for every state of the union. We pray for every governor and every mayor, every congressman that the people elect, every congresswoman, every senator, O oh God. Amen. Every member of cabinet, O oh God. Every member of staff, every member in the White House, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for our men and women that are serving overseas, that's making the sacrifice away from their loved ones, away from their families, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus. America is experiencing a dark moment. America is experiencing, oh my God, a pandemic. Lord, and it's not over yet. But I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every plague shall not come nigh thee. And no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling. We pray for America. We pray for the president. We pray, oh God, for the state of New York. We pray for the governor. We pray for the mayor. We pray for churches. Some churches are closed. Church is important. Church bring hope to the community. Church bring inspiration. And Lord, when the church is closed, it seems people are depressed. People have panic attack. People are dying. But oh God, as Nehemiah prayed, Nehemiah fast, Nehemiah mourn. The people of Nineveh prayed. The people of Nineveh fast. The people of Nineveh mourn. The people of Trinidad, the Indians and the Negroes will come together, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. The people of Guyana, O oh God, every fraction, O oh God. The people, O oh God, in Venezuela, the people in Lebanon, the people in Brazil, the people in India, the people in Russia, we pray, O oh God, for those on the front line who is giving their lives in Texas and Florida, in California and Georgia, in Arizona, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the doctors and the scientists, those that are working, O oh God, tirelessly, burning the midnight oil to get a vaccine, racing for cure in the name of Jesus. The economy, those that are unemployed, those businesses that are closed. Some got children to feed. Some got mortgages to pay. Some got a rent to pay. Oh God, we pray. I pray for Governor Cuomo. For the past eight days, over 1,000 people have died every day in America. On Friday, New York's was able to report only three deaths. Testing has gone up and the virus has gone down. I'm not saying we are out of the woods by any means, but we must be vigilant. We must be wise. We must be smart. We must be strong. I pray for those governors that don't take it seriously and put in people's lives at risk. It's not about party. It's about the safety of people. Oh God, I pray for the awakening. The postal service. The elderly who cannot go out there and standing in line for six hours, they must be able to vote. Some of them, their children are serving in the military. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we don't see black, we don't see brown, we don't see white, we don't see yellow, we see people. It never said if, he said if my people, not a fraction, not a tribe, not a clan, if my people, God is about people. Save the people. Help the people. Love the people. Glory to God. 
Do we have any Nehemiahs up in here? You know, sometimes when we get blessed, we say, that doesn't concern me. That's not my battle. Let somebody else fight it. I'm doing good. I'm in a king's palace. Why would I go there and put my life on the line and put myself to be criticized? Why? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Next week, we're going to talk about how Nehemiah, oh my God, a man that was concerned and full of passion, built the wall in a record-breaking time. But it was not easy. He was challenged. Listen, we'll all face challenges, but we can come through in Jesus' name. God bless you today. Amen. You know, I went in a different line this morning, but there comes a time when John the Baptist used his voice as one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make the path straight. The crooked ones, make them straight. The rough ways, make them smooth. And so we thank you. At this time, brothers and sisters, is our tithes and offering. And we know this is a new norm. I love people. I want to give you a hug so bad. But let's do the right thing. When I come down from here, I put my mask on. Amen. We want you to give this morning. And even giving, they said money carried germs. What some people are doing now, they are using technology to give. That's why stocks like Visa and PayPal and Square, they have skyrocketed. Cash up. People are now giving electronically. Instead of having to deal with the money and the check. So do your best you can. Amen. You can give online. This is a good ministry. This is good ground you're sowing on. Give via a PayPal. The information is there on the screen. You can give through Givelify. Amen. I know some people are home. They are watching. They love this ministry. They stand with this ministry. I know people that are out there that have tuned in every Sunday, every month, since the month of March, and they are consistent. I want to speak a blessing over your life today. God bless you as you give. You are sowing on good ground. Hallelujah. I pray a blessing upon your life. Father, I pray right now for every seed that is sown. Lord, so that we can invest in safety measures. We can invest in more equipments, oh God, to get this gospel throughout the entire world. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are watching, those that are listening. I speak a blessing over their lives in the name of Jesus. As we give, Lord, we're giving to good ground. And your word said when we give, it shall be given back unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Nehemiah gave up his time. He gave up his talent. He gave of his treasure. He went out there and got the job done. God bless you today. Be encouraged, and we will see you on next week. God bless you. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand of praise, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, we give God the glory. We give God the praise. Amen. I just want to thank God for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name.